We all know that saying, find your passion and build it into a business and you will never have to work a day in your life. But what if you found the thing that you're passionate about and built it into a business and now, after a few years, are a stress ball and hate going to work? You're just clock watching until you can make enough money to get out of there. Catherine Watkin of Selling from the Heart wants you to be able to build your business the right way. Catherine, when we talk about being in love with our business, do you mean a business that's about something we're passionate about? Yes and no. So typically the sorts of business owners that I work with have gone into business for one of two reasons. Either it's because they really feel very called to make a difference to other people through their work or there is something that they're really passionate about that they want to share with the world. But the thing is about when you create a business from your passion and this is the point that um, I get very passionate about, is that you can create a business based around your passion and still find that once you've created the business, you're not in love with it and it doesn't make you happy and you feel confused. Um, And I did something very similar. I used to sort of wake up in the morning and say, my gosh, I've created this incredible business based on my passion. It's beyond my wildest dreams. I know I should be pinching myself because I would never have thought I could create this. But something doesn't feel right and it feels heavy and there are things missing. And what I've come to realize is that there are things that we often don't know when we start out in business and that the trajectory of business we follow. So you could build a business based around your passion and find that you build a business that you don't actually love or you can build a business around your passion and end up with a business that you love. And that's what I want for people. Can you also build a business around something that you're not passionate about and fall in love with it? Oh, I don't know about that one. I think that what we can do sometimes is we can think we're not passionate about something. So my example would be I left my sales career um, however many, many years ago now, over 10 years ago, and I knew that I wanted to, to create a business where I did really meaningful work and I made a difference to people. The one thing I knew I was never going to do was do sales or sales training of any sort. I was leaving that behind. So I spent five years retraining in all these different modalities. I trained as a yoga teacher and an acupuncturist and a nutritional therapist and a hypnotherapist and everything before I came back 360 and realized that actually I really love teaching sales to small business owners who want to sell in an authentic, non-pushy way. So I didn't think it was my passion, but it is my passion and this is my passion business. And so I think that people can sometimes, they're often trying to get away from something. So the lady who does my bookkeeping has spent the last five or so years trying to find something that's not accounting to do and left me a message a couple of days ago saying um, I've realized that bookkeeping is my passion I just was trying to tell myself I needed to find something bigger and more shiny but actually this is what I want to do so and I think sometimes we can think that passion has to be some big and shiny thing where we're going to be really visible and we're going to change the world but maybe your passion is just sitting at home doing the bookkeeping or building websites for the people who are going to be visible. And that is your passion. Absolutely. Sometimes there's something very uh, pleasant about getting all your ducks in a line and all your zeros to add up and as all the accounts <laughs> are, they're just satisfying. Yeah. So how do you know what what you're passionate about? How do you find that? Yeah, big question. <laughs> yeah. Big question. And actually for me, when I'm talking about... Um, creating a business that you can um, fall in love and stay in love with where I start is I tend to find that people come to me with the passion already in place like I they already know I want to create a business doing this thing or this is my passion I want to make I want to monetize this and, and make this something that will give me a lifestyle and then where the problem comes in is that at the at some point usually when people are very serious about creating a business they reach the point when they when it clicks for them I can't figure this out on my own they go they will find help support they'll find a business coach or a business mentor then the business mentor will say to them for you to make a living out of your passion this is the way you need to do it and what they'll usually lay out will be like the blueprint or the step by step for the way they grew their business and got success and this is what happened to me I had some absolutely superb business mentors but they laid out their business model as the only way to do it. And it turned out that it wasn't the right business model for me. And so 
it's about realising, I think, that what's not taught enough and it's not shared enough and it certainly wasn't taught me in my early days in business is that there are all of these different business models and if you can really tap into what really lights you up, what you feel that you're put on the planet to do, you can select a business model that you're going to love until the end of your days. And so some of my clients work with me and all they want to do is is sit in a therapy room and work intensively one-to-one with clients in a really deep way. This is what lights them up. This is why they went into business in the first place. And then they go online and they get told by everybody out there that if you want to be successful, you have to create an online program and you have to set it up and get passive income while you sleep. And they go out and they start doing this. And the next thing they know, they are absolutely miserable because that's not what lights them up. On the other side of that, you've got someone like me who the less people I work with, the more unfulfilled I feel. So I created a very successful six-figure business where I worked very closely and intensely with a small number of women every year. And I always felt almost like I somehow wasn't quite able to fly. Because what I'm on the planet to do is to reach thousands of people all over the globe with my work. So I've had a 360 degree turn and I've gone from selling very high end pricing stuff to a small number of people to a very low priced model that I'm selling to many, many people. Um, And I've never been as in love with my business as I am today, which is why I'm so passionate about this, because it's only with hindsight that I can see that if somebody had helped me get clear on that vision and what I really loved to do earlier, I wouldn't have spent about five years pursuing a business model that wasn't right for me. Now, I still loved it and it was an exciting journey. But had I taken the time and had the right advice, I would probably have built something different. It's that old putting your ladder against the wall of success and you climb the ladder of success and you get to the top and you look around and you think, oops, wrong wall. (laughs) Oh, I love that. I've never heard that before, but I really like it. So you can, if you're passionate about something and you love this business, but you're not loving being in the business, maybe you need to look at your business model. So what sort of business models can you change to or change from? Uh, well, as a few examples, um, one would be deciding that you you want to work one-to-one with a small number of clients you just want to do the one-to-one work you don't want to get distracted into the big dream everyone sells you about the online programs and the passive income and stuff you just want to work one-to-one with people you might want to run online programs because you're at your best when you work with groups and this is me I'm at my best when I'm working with groups rather than one-to-one and although I do do the one-to-one work as well at times it may be that you want to develop a membership community which is what I'm now working on which is where you would develop a much bigger community and the the community itself sort of partly provides the support to each other and it's much less all about so some business models might be about you as the guru in a way where you're the one who's leading and providing the advice and creating more of a membership type of a thing which typically doesn't have to be but is often a lower investment for the customer that you might run an event-based model where you run live events and make money from running live events and at the live events you sell another live event at a higher price point for more days and then the model that I used to follow was selling a lower priced online program or that could have been a workshop. And at the end of that, selling these um, more high-end mentoring or masterminding or intensive transformational work at, at what I call a high-ticket price, but for less people. And that's just an example. So there's all these ways to cut the cookie. And when people start out in business, they're often not, don't have it laid out like that. And what I see is very often people trying to follow six different business models at once and not really understanding why it is that none of them are working because they haven't got clear. Ah, oh, I sell workshops and at the workshops I sell my mastermind or they haven't got clear on I go and give talks and then I offer discovery sessions and then I book in one-to-one clients or I'm going to grow my mailing list for two years and then I'm going to launch a membership. They haven't got that clarity so they're trying to do all of them at once and nothing works. So I guess the secret is figuring out what lights your fire. And then going from there, finding the business plan that will suit that. And I guess at this stage, you can find a business coach to help you with that. Is that how you work it? Yeah, but my advice would be to find a business coach who is versatile. Because the experience I had, I did work with some incredible business mentors. I grew my business to a six-figure turnover. This is pounds, British pounds turnover, very quickly. 
But the two business mentors who I worked with, they only taught the business model that they run themselves. And this is very common that you'll find some... So the person who's made a lot of money selling online programs will teach you the system for how to launch and sell online programs. And the person who's made a lot of money selling very high-priced one-to-one work will teach you the model for doing that. And it's less common to be able to come across a business coach or mentor who's able to start with you as the individual and dig into what lights you up, what makes what makes you want to get out of bed in the morning and let's design your business around that. So it's about finding someone who has that versatility and connected to this as well is not just the business model, but also the marketing strategies. So you can have a different marketing strategy as well that, that lights your fire. Exactly. And so what happens is people realize that they need the help and very often they go online to start looking for how can I get help growing my business and because they go online the first thing they find is all the people teaching them how to market their business online and the next thing they are down the social media rabbit hole and they are mis- now not everybody some people love social media but it's very common that people go down this social media rabbit hole These are people, people who have gone into business because they want to help other people who love people contact. And now they're spending their days at home on their computer, creating images on Canva and putting them out on social media, wondering day by day why they're not happier running this business that they left their job to do and they were so excited about. And it's because there isn't just one way of marketing your business. There are multiple ways. And again, it's about finding who am I as a person? What do I most enjoy? Where am I most in flow? What do I love? And when you find the marketing strategies that are absolutely right for you, what I see is that most people don't need more than two. So suddenly business becomes so much easier. And the other secret is that it doesn't feel like work anymore. And when your marketing doesn't feel like work, now you love your business. You're not dreading it because you wake up in the morning thinking, oh my gosh, I went into this business because I want to help people and now I'm having to do marketing every day because marketing feels fun. And some of us suit strategies like giving live talks or I like to do live, when I do stuff online, I like to do live stuff that's interactive like Facebook lives or webinars. Other people do suit social media, but it's about tapping into because you're going to have to do this for years. So if it feels heavy and it feels like a burden and it's draining your energy, you're not going to want to do it and you will run out of energy for this business that you could love forever if you just got some of these pieces in place. It's funny, we often talk about marketing strategies and business strategies and business plans. We never talk about our self-connecting to these mm. things. We just barrel along and and I love that, that we, we're allowed to connect and love things like marketing strategies. Yeah. There's almost this assumption that we're not supposed to enjoy our marketing and our sales, but actually it's the opposite. If you cannot fall in love with your marketing and you can't fall in love with your sales, you're not going to have what it takes to run that business for very long. And for me, the marketing I do, it's almost like the reason I struggle to do it is it just doesn't feel enough like work. (laughs) And and that's how it needs to feel for people. So your advice to people that aren't feeling in love with their business, where do they start? If they were working with me, I'd start by getting them to just getting really clear on a vision. So to sit somewhere quiet, get a nice cup of tea, maybe put some music on if that works for them, and to journal and create a vision for what it is that they really want their life to look like. And they'll get an idea. So I'm out here in Perth talking to you, but I live in London. And the reason I'm here is I've just spent a month here working. I've been staying with um, my very close friend, and Sophie Mahir, who I know you've interviewed recently, and I've been working. And a lot of people are very surprised. Well, you've gone all the way to Australia to work? And I'm like, yes, because my dream was always to have a business that I could run from anywhere. And of course, what had happened was I'd built this business model that had me working with a small number of women and having regular meetings in London. So I ended up creating this very successful business that wasn't taking me towards the vision I had. And now I've re, sort of rejigged things and I'm now running a membership site. My business is 97% online. I've got um, over 100 people in that and I haven't launched it properly yet. So I'm creating that business based on the vision of what I wanted to 
to achieve. So I'd say come right back to that vision. And if you can vision how you want your life and your business to look and feel in five years from now, that can help to guide the decisions you make today. Because if you want to be running a holistic centre in your local area and working one-to-one with clients three days a week, and that's your big dream, don't go off and create an online programme and market it to the whole universe. It just guides the decisions that you're going to make. So there is hope. You need to have a bit of a reassessment time. If you still love what you do, but maybe not how you're doing it, yes. there's hope for you. There is hope. <laughs> and we can all create a business that we can be in love with every day and stay in love with. And that's the secret. Thank you so much for joining us, Catherine Watkin. Thank you for having me. Catherine Watkin from Selling from the Heart. Find her online. She's full of great information and a lot of heart. Taking Care of Business, we'll be back with you next Monday.